Okay, so this is problem 2.15 out of Griffiths Electrodynamics. Um, it's another Gauss problem. Before I solve it, if you wouldn't mind please liking the video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. It does help me a lot and I greatly appreciate it. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get into the problem. So essentially what we need to do is find the electric field in three different regions of a thick spherical shell. So you kind of have a, ho a hole in the center of this sphere. And we want the E field in a bunch of different regions. The first one is for regions R less than A. So our Gaussian surface, its radius is going to be less than A. So that's this first circle I try to draw inside. Well, if all your charge density is on the shell, so in this area here, there's no enclosed charge. So if we do Gauss's law and say E dot dA, the integral of that is equal to the enclosed charge over epsilon naught, the enclosed charge is zero. So then the electric field, the magnitude of it is just zero. For part B, it then says we're somewhere between the radius A and the radius B. So we're somewhere inside this part. I try to draw it out in a different color, but hopefully you can see that we're somewhere inside the shell now. So now there is an enclosed charge, so that has to be kept in mind. So we can write out Gauss's law just as before. Now, the, uh, the E field dot dA, that'll give us the magnitude of E times, in this case, 4 pi r squared, so that's our Gaussian surface, is equal to the enclosed charge over epsilon naught. So our last bit of business here is to find what Q enclosed is. So if rho is the charge per volume, rho times dv, but I think they usually call it d tau, which is the volume element, is equal to dq. So the enclosed charge, our enclosed charge then is the integral of rho d tau. And we know rho is given as just k divided by r squared. So I'm going to factor out the k. We have the integral 1 over r squared. And then this is spherical coordinates. So our d tau is r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. And this is technically a triple integral. So I'm going to try to create a little bit more space here so I can do our bounds. We're integrating from r equals a to r equals b. And then we integrate from zero over to pi, zero to pi for the theta dependence, and then zero to two pi for the phi dependence. Hopefully you're fine with that. So all you have to do then is solve this integral. And once you do that, we have our E field times four pi r squared is going to be equal to, well, the cool thing is we can see that the r squared drops. The sine theta, the sine theta d theta and the d phi give you four pi. So we have four pi k, and then essentially just the integral dr. So divided by epsilon naught and b minus a, that's from the r term. So the integral of dr is just r evaluated from b to a. Obviously, you can see that the four pi's here drop. And then your E field is equal to k times b minus a divided by epsilon naught r squared. 
uh, in the r-hat direction. And I just realized, because I'm thinking about the next part of the problem, we're not actually integrating from 0 to, or from a to b. Or we need to integrate from a to some part r. So the only thing that changes there is this should actually be r. This should be r. And this should be r. Um, I guess if you wanted to be technical, these are dummy variables then. But hopefully that makes sense. So we're just integrating from some part right here. It's just something greater than a. Or I'm sorry, right here. It's greater than a but less than b. And then in the third case, it's outside of the whole sphere. So in that case, we're going to be integrating over this whole region. Or really just this region, since there's no charge density inside. So part three will go down essentially the exact same way. You have your electric field times 4 pi r squared from our Gaussian surface for a sphere. And there's really no difference between the two. You're going to do the exact same integral. So you'll get your 4 pi k over epsilon naught, integral dr. The only difference now is we have to change our bounds of integration from a to b. So the only difference here is your electric field then is just going to be your 4 pi still cancel k times b minus a like I had before over epsilon naught r squared in the r hat direction. Okay. So if you wanted to draw, I'm not going to draw all of it, but you could just easily draw the magnitude of your electric field with respect to R. It's going to be zero for a while. And then your electric field is going to go up. So you'll follow now part B from A to just some point in our space here, we'll call from B. So it's gonna to continue to climb as your electric field is going to increase because what's happening is as you move from, you start off with nothing, then you hit something and it grows, it grows, it grows, and it's growing in here because there's more charge density that's contributing to the electric field. So as you go through here, your electric field is getting stronger because of the charge density. Now, once you're outside and you get further away, your E field goes off as 1 over R squared. Great. Goes off as 1 over R squared. So then it's going to kind of follow a... Never actually going to get to zero, but it's going to become very small. So I guess I did actually graph it. This should, I don't know why I did that in a different color. That's zero. So that's how you approach this problem. You write down Gauss's law for each region. You write down your electric field times your surface area, which doesn't change in any of these processes, any of these processes. And then you need to find your enclosed charge. So the enclosed charge sometimes will require you to integrate, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. Once you integrate it, you just solve for your electric field, and then just looking at our equations, I think it's pretty straightforward uh, to draw the graph of it. So hopefully that makes sense, and if it did, please like this video and subscribe, and I'll post more videos. Thank you.